My name is Hans Larsen. I uh, work at Google. My main duty was to uh, work on Angular Material. And then after a while, I saw that the community needed some kind of tool. And I found the CLI project, and I took care of that too. So I'm the lead, on the, um, I'm the lead inside Google on the CLI. And I work on Angular 2 Material in between. Uh, it's kind of a 50-50 kind of job. Like, you know we have our 20% project at Google. Well, I have two 80% project, basically. Um, also, like, I hear a lot of people talking about uh, JavaScript fa fatigue, right? So my, my only big advice for that is to basically take a nap. Um, <laughs> all right, that was the pun of the day. You guys are good. You're a good crowd. <laughs> yes, you, you might ask me a question after. <laughs> the pun doesn't work that way. Mustache. Uh, so anyway, um, who here knows about um, Angular 2? Oh, OK. Um, all right, well, uh, this is going to save some time. Um, I guess I can just go through all of, uh, OK. So, yes, thank you. Um, and so Angular 2 material. Who knows about Angular 2 material, the project itself? Oh, God, you guys are so good. Um, OK, well, for those who don't know, because it was about 40% uh, hands down, for those of who don't know, material, uh, Angular material was uh, basically the project that was built for Angular 1. It was a community project uh, that was following the material spec, uh, the material design spe spec for uh, the web made by Google. And it was a set of components and a set of libraries that was made for Angular 1. Um, And uh, it has over 14,400 stars on GitHub. I counted each one of them. And uh, it's in the top 150. Uh, it has over 50,000 uh, NPM install in the last month. So it's a, it's, a, it's a huge project. It's over 40 components. And it supports theming. It supports um, layout, uh, reflect, um, not reflective, but responsive design. And uh, it has internationalization and accessibility directives for Angular 1. So because like all this time that you basically would work on making a, bu a button look good, like you shouldn't have to spend that much time on it. Basically, you shouldn't spend time on shaving yaks. You should be spending time on building your UI and all that. You and um, the, for those who don't know, yak shaving is basically working on something that's unrelated to the task that, but it's unrelated but necessary to the task that you need to accomplish. And we'll come back to that concept later with the CLI because that's exactly what material and the CLI is all about is you want to build, you, you have this idea of a website in your head and you want to put it on paper, but sometimes HTML, CSS and all that, it doesn't re really react how you think it would. And, um, you might have heard uh, this week there was a big uh, Angular 2 release, apparently. Uh, it's out of uh, RC now, and it's officially official that it's final. So it's been released Wednesday. I know. There's some excited people in the crowd. This guy <laughs> was doing the presentation. Um, and so for Angular 2, what we did is basically start from scratch the Angular Material project, and we started building Angular 2 Material. Uh, which is, you know, a, a full rethinking, a full redesign of the material components with uh, everything that we learned from every, like, better architectural design and learning from the mistakes that, like, we learned from Angular 1. Like, CSS is hard. Uh, making sure that there's no breaking changes is hard. And we want to start from the ground up with thinking about that in advance. And it's, uh, there's better testing. We're including accessibility testing, performance testing, and we'll have screenshot diffs as well so that we make sure that when we change something, it's deliberate. It's not something that just happened and it's like three pixels higher and it will break your layout because you didn't know about it. We will know about it before and we can tell you. It's, um, with Angular 2, uh, with RC5, 
came modules and ng-modules really simplified the way you use libraries in um, Angular 2. And uh, it makes it super easy to import and use libraries. And <laughs> Angular 2 material being our biggest first party library is a good example of how we can really like work your workflow. If you're a library builder, like we can really help you because we're building a huge library out there and we want to make sure that the word, that it's as simple to build a library as it is to, to build an application with Angular. Uh, it's fully AOT compatible, so you only deploy what you use. And it's currently in alpha. Um, it's in alpha, it's gonna come out of alpha and beta, uh, I can't say any time, but soon. And uh, basically download to your own risk, there are still changes, there's still stuff being like, some API changes. Um, but this is an early presentation, so to see how, how it works for you guys and how it's easy to use for you guys. Um, so like I said, it's in alpha, it's currently in alpha eight. Uh, we do have like 18 components, they're not all on that. Uh, oh, I have another slide, but they are not all, of, uh, all on that. Uh, we went from six in, uh, at ng-conf, we were having six components, no, a little bit before ng-conf, and now we're over 18 components. So we're building them fast. We have a lot of help from the community. We have a lot of help from other members inside Google, 20 percenters that are helping with that and creates like components like buttons, you know, progress bar, I guess circles, um, checkbox input, everything follows the material spec, um, the material design spec. And um, gesture is supported, for example, so for a toggle button, you can, on, on a mobile platform, you can just flick it and it works. Um, or you can tap on it, or you can use your mouse and flick it with your mouse. Uh, but basically we, we support uh, gestures, we support, uh, we will support responsive, we will have like a layouting kind of uh, support for uh, responsive design. And of course we do support um, screenshot diffs, like I said. So basically every time we make a change, uh, we see exactly what changed. This is, yeah, I could have made that a little bit better. Um, but everything, uh, so we can say in the, we can tell you, like in the release notes and in the change log, like we know that these changes, these PRs made changes to the layout. Here's what happened. Here's how you can help uh, fix it in your app or maybe there's nothing to do in your app. Um, and so this is, this is a full library, but it's also like separated in different portions. Uh, what we want to do with this is really build a foundation for other libraries to be built upon. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Um, basically, you build your application on top of the material components. And material components right now include, but we want to, you know, be able to reuse it inside of your library. So you, if you're doing an Angular 2 library, um, we, we want to put out the component library toolkit with support for overlays so you don't have to worry about like positioning. So I want to position a dialog at this place and when the user scroll, I want the dialog to stay up at this place. Or I want it to follow another element. Or I want it animated. So we already have code for that. And you shouldn't have, as a library builder, you shouldn't have too much to worry about like positioning stuff, positioning DOM, positioning UI inside your DOM. Also, we want to, we want to add a huge part for mobile, um, gestures, responsive layout, pro uh, progressive uh, PWA compatibility and support so that the app can be rendered on the server, or it can be uh, like so that when you download your first index.html, you already have the page and it fully works. We have demos for that. Uh, it does work, the buttons work, uh, and it records, for example, the clicks and then when the, ad, when the JavaScript is ready, the clicks are handled and the DOM gets uh, adapted. Um, which saves a lot of bandwidth, which saves a lot of time to the user because the app is almost instant. Also, accessibility is difficult um, and we want to help everybody with that, uh, with having like live announcer support for um, JAWS, uh, the Mac speech uh, thing that I always forget what name it is. 
uh, basically libraries that um, help you like help blind people use computers. So that all our components already support that, but you can also build on top of it and support it in your libraries as well. Um, focus management. So if you want to do like focus trapping inside a dialog, or if you want to do um, change the focus, handle the focus, uh, so that again people with accessibility. Uh, know where they are and where they can go. And of course, end-to-end -end testing, end-to-end -end tools that uh, can help you test your application to see, like, is my contrast okay? Is my, well, if you use component, if you use material components, yes, everything will be okay because we're, we kind of make sure of that. Um, but if you build your own libraries, we can provide you tools too to make sure, like, what if, like, somebody visually impaired use my app can they, can, can they use it? Can they know where they are in the page and where to go and what to do? Um, so we do support that. And we want to support much more uh, virtual scrolling uh, to really speed up uh, scrolling over a huge amount of data, huge, huge tables, huge pages. Uh, selection model, so you can select text and everything. Uh, theming, if you want to change theming in your app. Um, and of course, more advanced components. Uh, I did a short talk, a short uh, five minutes presentation on more advanced components, but stuff like uh, rich text editing. Um, building a rich text editor requires a lot of stuff that's not just a component. And uh, we can provide tools to help you do that. And of course, we are planning already to have a text editor somewhere in the future. Uh, data table maps uh, components for that. Um, and of course, the component library toolkit itself uh, is being built with the, uh, with the thought that maybe you don't want material components. Maybe you want your own library. Maybe you want something like Bootstrap. Uh, you want to build a Bootstrap library, but you don't want to really spend all the time working on gestures and overlays and all that. So that's, that's why it's, um, not, not why, but um, that's how it's being built, basically with that in mind that it's re reusable. That's the word I was looking for. Um, yeah, and so I was told that my presentations were a little dry, uh, so people told me to put charts in it. So I decided to put the charts. Uh, this is the number of days since the project started. Um, we can do a projection in the future to say that it's gonna continue to grow. Um, And if you want to uh, have more information, if you want to get uh, to, to follow us to get more information, you can look at the Material One. Material One is a full-blown library. It's now at the 1.1.1 version. Uh, if you if you're still using Angular One, this is definitely a library that you want to at least look at. If you're starting in Angular One, maybe you should start with Angular Two. But if you really want to start with Angular One, and Material One is really mature at this point, and it's. Uh, it's a full uh, framework, a full set library of components. And of course, Material 2 is now, um, is now getting like some steam behind and we are really going strong, implementing new components every week now. Um, and of course, the Material Design spec itself, which is material.google.com. Uh, some special thanks to the Material 1 and the Material 2 uh, folks. Um, a lot of people contributed. This is just the top 18, 18s, uh, but there is a lot of contributors that participated into Angular 1, uh, Angular Material 1, and Angular Material 2. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit because if you are starting a new project and you want to use Material 2, uh, you're still stuck with the concept of starting a new project in Angular. And this can be scary, like, one, once you've done, like, make zero, like, what, what do you do? Like, okay, I have an empty directory now, npm start, I guess, and npm install something. Um, to help you, we've basically done uh, a tool, uh, the Angular CLI. It's not pronounced CLI, for those who wanted to know. Um, and we build that because managing your tool chain isn't your priority, nor should it be. Uh, you should not have to worry 
about your project, you should let the tools worry about your projects. You should worry about your code. You should worry about your app. You should not have to code anything. You should not have to, yak, to shave yaks before you get started. And this is a really powerful tool because it gets you exactly where you need to be. And we'll show a demo where you need to be to get started with your apps. Um, you basically just create a project. You can build. You can test. Uh, you can deploy them. Um, it's, it supports SAS less CSS uh, right out of the box. There's no dependencies. The dependencies are easy to use. If you're using something like uh, uh, Bootstrap or well, Moment, uh, you just npm install Moment, you might want to need the typings for it because TypeScript needs typings. But if you don't want to use typings, you don't even have to install the typings. You just install Moment, you import it inside your TypeScript code, and you start using it. There is no, there is no third step. It's, that's it. And it's the same for material as well. Uh, in, in the CLI, uh, the supports for ahead of time compilation is coming. Uh, this is the only, the biggest point that remains before we leave beta and become RC. And what that will do is that without any changes to your projects, you can start your projects right now with the CLI, and you can start building your super app. And you'll see some um, upside already with like some tree shaking, but it's not that much. The most powerful thing is once we're going to enable a ahead of time compilation, all these HTML, all these uh, templates and styles are going to be compiled before you, you bu we bundle your app together. And now we're going to remove everything that you don't need. So if you use like a library like Material, for example, or even stuff like Angular Compiler, if you don't need the Angular Compiler, and chances are you won't need it because you just compiled your templates. You don't need to compile on the, uh, in the client anymore. And then we just remove it from your bundle. And your bundle uh, will get super small. We did a test um, with an early version of the AOT and a new application in a new application made by the CLI uh, with AOT support was 57k. Um, and for those who keep numbers, 57k is definitely like one of the smaller apps out there. Uh, some frameworks are bigger than 57k. Some, uh, some libraries are bigger than 57K. Your whole app, without any kind of big logic in it, but your whole app, in this case, was 57K in our example. Uh, so if you use Material, for example, and you use JIT, and you import Material uh, into your app, you're basically importing the whole of Material. So you're using a button, but you're not using tabs. Well, tabs is going to be there, too, because it's not really tree shaking. With, with AOT, we remove everything that you don't need. So if you only need button, you only get button. And this is really strong. And also, the CLI understands your code. And I'm going to do a sh little short uh, view of that. But, and that's going to be just a preview. Uh, 2017 is going to be an awesome year, um, mostly because it's a great number to start with. Um, and we already are starting, at the end of 2016, we already are starting to understand your code, understand your app. So you're working on an app. You're starting to make like these components. And the CLI understands the links between those components and can do stuff. And what we're coming up in the next year is going to be like some refactoring tools for you guys. So if you want to you know, split the component into two or merge two or you know, see what could be improved in your app, you will have like some refactoring tools that will understand your code and change it and make it work better. So how to start with the CLI? Um, it's kind of simple. Uh, it's easier than saying prestidigitator. I, I missed that joke it's so hard. Um, you engine new project, uh, or you create a new directory and you engine it in it. And um, you basically ng-generate module with the name of it, and it creates a module. Or you can ng-generate components, services, pipes. I'm going to go a little bit faster. 
Uh, and then you can serve it locally. You can build it to deploy it, and you can build it dash dash prod to deploy the prod version. Uh, some special thanks to uh, the awesome team of developers uh, that have been participating in um, the CLI. These guys are awesome. I work with them every day. It's really cool. It's really cool. Um, and um, finally, we love Material. It's so easy. You npm install at Material slash button. You import the button module. You use the button module in your module. And that's it. You, you can just start using it in your templates. Um, and yes. But it's true. You can like it. It's that easy. I'll. Um, I'll do a two minutes quick demo here, if I can. Um, or actually, I'm just going to do, oh, do you see that? That's awesome. Cool. So, uh, OK. What happened? Oh, dear. I'm good. All right. No, I don't want to update right now. I think I don't think that's I don't think that's the right time to update right now. Okay. Hush. Okay. Where am I? My project. Okay. So this is a project that is pure. There is nothing in it, and I'm just gonna generate a new component called uh, my component which is really nice. And as you can see, it's gonna generate a bunch of files. And now, if I go with status, you can see that the new component is done. Oh God, uh, can you read? Yes, you can see that the new component is added here, but you can also see that it modified the app module.ts. And this is the part where I say like, we're just at the beginning of this, but we understand your sources. So we understand that you want to add this new component inside your app module. And for that, for you, we basically add the import automatically and we add it to the declarations. And uh, we know how to do that because this is not regexes. This is using the actual source code. We compile your file and then we look at the tree and we find out, okay, you need to insert something here. It's aligned here and we do that here. And this is just a start. And if you add like new uh, modules, uh, to, your, uh, to your app and you generate components under that module, we'll find the closest module to that and we just assume that it's, it is, you can skip that step of course, there's a lot of arguments to every of these commands, but um, we take the closest module and we basically uh, insert, declare your component there. And so I'm out of time. Uh, I just wanted to say at the end that um, this is just the start of the CLI. This is just the start of Angular 2 uh, material. Um, try it out. Try out the CLI. All you have to do to use material is npm install material and then import it and start using it. It's literally all there is. There is no configuration for the tool. The CLI understands your dependencies. And um, thank you. You're awesome. <laughs>